Now let's continue on with molecular formulas. Molecular formulas are usually the formulas of covalence, not always, but usually, and these show the actual number of atoms present, uh, contrary to the empirical formulas, which only show the lowest ratio of atoms. The steps are very similar in the beginning. You actually have to find the empirical formula before you can find the molecular formula. So, as one would expect, first you convert to moles, divide by the smallest, round reasonably, or multiply to get a whole number if you land in that 0.3 to 0.7 range, and that gives you the empirical formula, the smallest number or smallest ratio of atoms present. After that, then we start moving on to the molecular formula. The first thing you need to do is to find the empirical formula mass. So just like any other formula mass, you add together all of the atoms in the empirical formula. Then you're going to divide the molar mass by the empirical formula mass to get some number. The molar mass is a number that is usually given in the problem because it has to be determined experimentally by a mass spectrometer or something like that. So it will be given to you. After that, you're going to take that number and you're going to multiply it by your empirical formula to get your molecular formula. This is the factor that makes these two formulas different, that helps us go from ratio to actual number of atoms present. So let's try a couple of examples. This first one uh, uses that weird scenario that we talked about in the last video where it gives me my problem in, or it gives me my amounts in liters as opposed to grams, but we're going to approach it just the same. So we're going to start off by converting both to moles. So 1.12 liters, but instead of dividing by the formula mass, since we're going from liters to moles, I have to use that 22.4 factor from our wonderful mole map. All right, let's see here. So when I divide those two, I'm going to get something. I thought I already had this worked out, but apparently not. 11, 1.12 divided by 22.4 gives me 0 0.05. 2.25 divided by 22.4 gives me 0 0.10046. Divide by the smallest. This one is, in fact, smaller. Gives me 2.009. After this step, we round reasonably. This one worked out well because this is so close to 2 that I can round without much ado. So my empirical formula for this compound is, in fact, NO2. Now we move on to the molecular formula. So, just to recap, step one, we converted to moles. Step two, we divided by the smallest. Step three, we rounded reasonably. Now on to step four. We need to find the empirical formula mass of my NO2. I'm going to add together my nitrogen plus my two oxygens. So nitrogen has a mass of 14.01 plus my two oxygens. Let me plug that into my calculator right quick. Gives me 46.01 grams per mole. On to step five. I'm going to divide my molar mass by my empirical formula mass. My molar mass came from my problem, 92 divided by the empirical formula mass that I just found, and hopefully we'll get something near a whole number. That's pretty near a whole number. I can happily round that. So this is my n. This is the factor that's going to turn my empirical formula, my ratios, into my molecular formula. So I have to multiply my factor times my formula. And we're going to distribute this just like you do in math class. It distributes to each number in turn, the 2 to the n. Then when I go to the o, I've got 2 times 2 is 4. So there is the molecular formula for this problem. Let's try one more together. A sample contains 0 0.06 grams carbon, 0 0.01 grams hydrogen. Excuse me while I move my table. Uh, oh, it's 0 0.11 gram hydrogen. That might make a difference. I copied this off of another practice sheet I have. Molar mass is 142. Find the molar or molecular formula. All right, as per usual, step one, convert 
two moles. Since we're back in mass, I'm back to using the formula mass. 0 0.011 divided by 1.01. .01. Let's see what we get when I plug these into my calculator. My handy dandy calculator never leaves home without them. 0 0.004998. Remember to carry out as many decimal places as you can stand. It ultimately makes these problems easier. Okay, divide by the smallest. This one is smaller. Plug it into my handy dandy calculator, calculator, as some say. Now this one's kind of hinky, because when I get to my round reasonably step, that one's pretty easy. This one's right on the border, since it's less than 0.3, we're going to call it okay. So my empirical formula for this one is CH2. Now let's go on to find the empirical formula mass. Let me push that up a bit further so you can see it, which is going to be my one carbon plus my two hydrogens. late in the day. I don't feel like doing this in my head. Empirical formula mass. Molar mass divided by empirical formula mass. So 142 divided by 14.03. Hopefully that'll give us something near a whole number. 10.12. That's close enough to 10 that I can round. So whoopsies. Ugh. Sorry about that. So 10 is my n. Now I'm going to have to go on and multiply that factor times my empirical formula of CH2. So 10 times CH2. I got to distribute my 10 to both my C and my H. So that comes out to C10 H20. And there you have it, folks. Molecular formulas. Happy formula-ing. Oop, you can't hardly see that. <laughs>